ever since the very first video I've uploaded on this channel, this has been by far the most frequently asked question. How do you get the effects? What type of line is going into the archive? How did you get a controller connected to your MPK mini to your PM? And the answer is, I don't. In fact, the MPK is connected to my computer. So, I hope this clarifies things. See you in the next video. Nah, just kidding. Let's take a step back and see exactly how I managed to get effects for my samplers seemingly out of nowhere. In many of my videos, I use a combination of Volker Sample and PO33. The Volker Sample's output goes into inputs 7 and 8 of my sound card. The PO33's output goes into inputs 5 and 6. Sometimes by way of an SP404SX, they might sit in the middle just to add some vinyl simulation or compression. The sound card is connected to my computer using this absolutely grotesque conglomerate of very expensive adapters. And for that, I'm very grateful to Apple. Thank you, you greedy lizard. Anyway, the sound card allows me to route both my signals into Ableton Live, which is where the magic actually happens. I have two virtual channels, one using input 7 and 8 named Sample, and the second using inputs 5 and 6 named PO33. Both channels have a compressor on, and while that helps with volumes, yes, it's mostly for adding some sonic character. I also usually slap an EQ on both tracks to take out any unwanted frequencies. The meat of the matter, however, lies on the master channel. This is my master effects unit. This box is called an audio effect rack. Audio effects racks in Ableton are super powerful because you can put whatever you want in them. In this case, I have a phaser, a delay, a high pass filter, a beat repeat and a frequency shifter. You can map any of these parameters to the eight macro knobs here. I'm mapping the phaser's dry wet parameter to knob one, the delay's dry wet parameter to knob 2, the shifter's amount parameter to knob 3, the filter's frequency parameter to knob 5. Knobs 6 to 8 are reserved for controlling the beat repeater. As you probably noticed, knob 4 is blank, but I'll explain that in just a minute. Now that we have a custom rack in place, let's save it. I'll call it, I don't know, Steve. We'll connect the MPK, we go into Preferences, Link, Slash MIDI, and make sure it shows up in our list. So now when Steve is selected and highlighted, the 8 knobs on the MPK will automatically connect to the 8 micro knobs, with no need to use MIDI mapping. Voila! We have a fully functioning custom effects unit. Now, what about that pesky knob 4? Well, sometimes I like applying one effect only on one channel rather than on the master. In this case, I'd like to control the amount of reverb of just the sound coming from the PO33. And to do that, I go to MIDI, click on the reverb send, move knob number 4 and it's done. Let's put it all together now with a super quick performance. <laughs> And this is it. This is how you make a fully customizable FX unit for your synths and samplers using Ableton Live. It's worth noting that you can do this in pretty much any DAW, but Live is by far the easiest one to set up. I hope this video clarifies the whole how do you connect your MPK to the PO33 controversy. Some people were actually angry about this. What it doesn't clarify, however, is how I got these really funky off-grid drums on the Volker sample. And for that, I'm afraid you're gonna have to click on this video right here, pal. Come on, come on, I know you want to.